All right guys, in this video we're going to take a look at how we can create this sort of animation effect in Next.js and Frame of Motion. And I know this is more transitions, CSS transitions rather than animations, but to be honest, anything that moves on the screen, I just call animations. So with that said, I'm going to demo now <laughs> what we're going to create in this really quick video. So if we scroll down the page, this is a very, very common transition or animation. You've probably seen it hundreds of times on many websites. If I scroll down the page here, we can see that the content sort of slides in and fades in from the bottom. So if I scroll down again, we can see we have another example here. The content fades in and slides in from the bottom. So this is the type of animation we're going to create in this quick little video. So one thing to note with this animation as well is we can see that each heading and paragraph tag fades in and comes in from below at slightly different transitions. So if we notice, the heading comes in a little bit slower and the paragraph comes in a little bit faster. Now they all start and finish at the same time, but we're going to offset the amount that each of these tags come in by. Additionally, we can see as well that after the animation is finished, anytime we scroll back up the page, we don't restart that animation. So we only animate when the element is in view. With that said, let's head on over to the code then. I've already got a Next.js 15 project up and running. And if we quickly head on to the browser, each of these sections, I'm rendering a component called property details. So in my property details component, then I've already got frame of motion installed. The first thing we need to do, because we need to use JavaScript in this component, i.e. frame of motion, we need to mark this as use client. So this is going to be a use client component. Then we need to import use in view from frame of motion. From here, what we want to do is we want to check to see if this particular section here, this paragraph tag, is in view, i.e. if the user has scrolled down to this particular tag yet or not. So as soon as the user scrolls down to this tag, that's when we want to trigger our animation. So if we head on back to our code then, all we need to do is first reference that paragraph tag. So we need to use const ref here, set that equal to use ref, which we need to import at the top of our file from React. Then we want to set ref here equal to the paragraph tag. So let's set ref equal to ref there. So then what we can do then is we want to use the use in view hook from frame of motion. So let's go is in view here and set this equal to use in view. And we want to pass in the ref of our paragraph tag like so. Then all we need to do, this is going to return a Boolean is in view. All we need to do is update our styling for the tags we want to animate based on this value. So if is in view, what we want to do is essentially reset the styling for that particular element. So for example, let's use the H1 as an example here. We want to set a style on our H1. First of all, let's set a transition of all properties. We're going to set a transition duration of something like two seconds, and we'll have the transition animation of is in out. Next, let's set an opacity. So if is in view, we want the opacity to be one else we want the opacity to be zero. So it's going to be zero by default. Then when we scroll down and the paragraph tag is in view, then our H1 will have opacity of one. And it's going to have a nice animation because we've set the transition to all properties. So if we save this first and take a look in the browser to see what we've got so far, let's hit refresh. We can see the H1 fades in, the opacity changes from zero to one. Let's scroll down. We can see our second content, our second property details, Heading tag fades in as soon as the paragraph is in view. Let's scroll down slightly then and make sure that this is all working correctly and actually see the effect in action. So if we scroll down to the paragraph tag for this next block, we should then see the heading fade in. So let's scroll down, the heading is hidden, and then we just about saw the paragraph in view, and then the heading changed its opacity from zero to one. Now, all we need to do then is update the style to also come in from the bottom. So to do that, we can use the translate Y on the CSS transform property. So let's head on over to our code. Let's update this then to transform as well. We wanted to add a transform property to our H1. If is in view, we want our translate Y to be zero. Else we want our translate Y to be something like 100 pixels. So again, if we save this and head on over to the browser, let's give it a refresh. We can see our heading tag fade in and up from the bottom. Let's scroll down to our second one. 
Let's scroll down to our third one and our fourth one. So we can see we've got that nice transition effect already. From here, I'm just going to update the transition duration slightly to something like 1.5 seconds, just so it's a little bit quicker. Then all we need to do is update the rest of the elements that we want to animate. So let's just copy our style here. Let's apply it for the H2 tag and let's apply it for the paragraph tag. So if we save this now and take a look in the browser, let's give it a quick refresh. We can see everything coming in at the same time. However, it's going to be a lot nicer if it looks like these are all staggered or they come in at different values of the translate Y. So it's going to look like it's going to have a sort of staggered effect if we increase the translate Y for each of these tags. So let's head on back to our code. Let's update this then for our H2. We're going to translate Y from 150 pixels. And for our paragraph tag, let's translate Y from 200 pixels. So if we save this now and take a look in the browser, let's give it a refresh again. We can see this looks a lot nicer, the transition effect. It looks like it's kind of staggered. Let's scroll down, we can see. But you may have noticed that the top one here, the one we just translated from, or the one we just transitioned from, or scrolled past, it's stuck in this loop where it's actually constantly fading in and out. Now, ideally, we want this to just stick on the page. As soon as the transition has ended, we don't want the transition to fire a second time. So to do this, we can head on back to our code and in our use in view hook, we can pass some options here. We can set once equal to true. So by default, is in view will be false. Anytime the element referenced by ref here is scrolled into view, is in view will be true and it will remain true. So it will never, once we scroll past that element, it will never return to false. So if we head on back to our code, let's give it one last refresh. Let's scroll down then. We can see our nice transitions fading in from the bottom. Let's scroll all the way to the top then, and we can see that the transition doesn't rerun because we use that once property for use in view. And one last thing as well to finish this off and clean this up. Ideally, we won't attach the is in view hook to an element that is itself animating. So for example, because this has a translate Y offset of 150 pixels or however many pixels we gave it. Initially, this paragraph is going to be actually way under here. So it's only when we scroll down to way under here that the transition will actually trigger. And as well, the loop we saw before where the animation was just looping was because the paragraph was transitioning in, but it was going out of view. So then the animation was restarting. Obviously, this doesn't matter if we're using the once property or the once option in the use in view hook. However, to get around this, we could just add a dummy element. So for example, quickly, if we head on back to the code, we could just add a dummy element where we want the transition to trigger. So instead of adding the ref to a paragraph tag here, we could just add a dummy div in here and add the ref to that. So because we're not animating the div or adding any transitions to this div, then we're not going to get that weird sort of loop effect if we're not using the once option. So this is going to result in exactly the same behavior. All right, guys, in this video, we're going to take a look at animations in Next.js. <laughs>